righty then, Elmer Fudd here. And if you remember from part one, we left off where I showed you where a couple pieces of the frame of my ATV here uh, broke off. Well, that's these two pieces here. I need to get them prepped. As you can see, the one is missing the nut. And the one, excuse me, this one's missing the nut that is stamped in there, I think, like this. So I bought a tool, and we're going to hope to rectify that real quick. Okay, this is the tool I bought. I don't know if you can see that or not. That off of Amazon, part number. It says it's a hand riveter kit, but actually... In the trades, we call this a rev nut tool or a nut surf tool. So this is the tool. And I've got one of the, the mandrels in here already pre-installed to the size I need. And that size matches this screw. Okay, so this is what they look like before you compress them. And this is one, a test one that I did afterwards. So the knurled part here is what crimps up and provides a bite to the metal. So I've got to get that hole enlarge so we can go through here. Um, the key concern I had was it was going to stick out too far and hit the part of the frame but I already did a dry fit on it and I think we're going to be all right. So let me get this prepped. So I'm not going to bore you with drilling the hole. Well maybe I will. I'll get the hole drilled. I got to find a bit to match that diameter. And uh, this is an M8 metric size mandrel on there. And there's a picture on there. And if we go like this, you can see this uh, screws on here like that. And then you take those levers. Well, actually, you start with the levers all the way apart like that. And then screw this down. And then you pull the levers together and it crimps that on down and the idea is we're hoping it's going to bite down tight enough through this metal that uh, it's going to hold in place and I'll be able to get a screw through there. So before I get these welded I got to get this prepped. Alright, let me get the, the drill motor ready to go. Oh, and if that part about Elmer Fudd went over your head, go back and watch part one, and you should get it. But just in case, <laughs> you can always Google it. All right, be back in a second here. All righty then, I got the old buckhorn drill. And uh, let's see here. I didn't want to tighten this down too tight because I don't want to pinch this out of shape too much. But let's uh, let's lower it a little bit. Alrighty, that did the trick. Alright, that's how it's going to look. So 
Well, here we go. Let's do some crimping here. So, oh, I'm going to pull that out. Spin it down here. Now, with these mandrels, you got to be careful you don't put too much force on them. Okay, here we go. I didn't feel like it pulled very tight, so let's we're gonna screw this down a little tighter. See if we can scrunch it some more. Okay. All right, I lost one of my garage lights here, but to get this out of here. I'm just going to unscrew this, and you should see it right here coming out. Okay, let's take a look here. Now you should be able to see it scrunched up. And, uh, Looks like it's not going to go anywhere. Should hold. Let me get a bolt. All right, so that goes in there like that. not going to be that tight because I'm going to have a, a bar of that frame bra uh, rack bracket going to go in there, but I don't know. We'll see if it holds. Um, if not, I'm going to have to find a way to cramp it down, crimp it on down there tighter. It appears to be tight for the moment. Okay, I had to move the workbench here because of that light causing me some issues. Uh, I have a fluorescent lighting fixture here in the garage that has been intermittently cutting in and out. And the cheap bastard I am, I don't want to spend the money to, to replace it while well, it still sometimes works. Huh. Make mental note. <laughs> Stop being so cheap. I wanted to take and kind of go over this a little bit. Now this is a this one mirrors the one I had purchased about a year ago for my work truck, um, which I no longer have because no longer am I a field technician. I'm an engineer, supposedly. Anyway, so th these mandrels it comes with a bunch of different size rib nuts but the mandrels are in here they come like this and they got the little seat on there but this one is uh i don't know if that's going to show or not five sixteenths by 18 18 is be the thread pitch quarter by 20 10 by 24 Okay, so that's M8, which is what's, what I just used. Smaller one, M6, being M means metric, and M5. So, come with these six mandrels. And these different packages that are labeled the size of it. Has. So, anyway, got the job done and what I needed. Picked it up on a... Uh, Astro 1442. Picked it up on Amazon. Boy, did they go up in price from what they were a year ago. Let's get that out of the way. Factory on the left. Aquadogs fix it on the right. 
You can kind of see where the bar hits inside here. I don't know if that's going to show. There you go, right in there. You can see the cut line from the frame. So I got that much room. If you put the, the bolt in it, you don't drop it. It's because I'm doing it left hand. Let's do it right handed. There you go. All right. Goes in all the way. Even all the way tight, it still doesn't stick through there. So, got plenty of room if I wanted to use a longer bolt to get more thread bite. Looks like they use Loctite on these. So, I'll need to get some of that. All right, so now I got to prep these. I got to get my grinder out, take some of this paint off. So I can get a, a welding bead on there. <laughs> Just lost another garage light. <laughs> that was a, probably a timeout from the garage door. Okay, so give me a second to get the grinding tool out and... Uh, We'll do some grinding on here. Oh, wow, it looks like somebody had done some welding on here previously. Maybe that's from the factory. Right, you can kind of see some on this one, too. Both of these look a bit twisted. I don't know if it comes with factory that special made that way, or it's just from the shearing back and forth warped it out of size before it finally broke. All right, I'm gonna pause and gonna get the grinder out. Probably a wheel would have worked better. I wonder if I got a wheel. I'll be right back. All right, so I went and found my flap wheel. It's brand new. Um, sort of a flap wheel. I didn't want to tear it up on these sharp edges, so I think we'll try the brush. see where the break actually occurred from there all the way around to here so it should be good enough to get a bead going on that to weld it all right I got that ground I am going to uh, see if I can get underneath the quad Grind some of the paint off of the frame. I'm not going to film that part. Um, and then I'll see if I can get these to line up, bolt them in place. I might film that part. We'll come back. Okay. I'm going to attempt to weld right through here. This piece to the frame. That piece to the frame. And I gotta do the other the other side too, but it's not lining up the way I want on this side. So I'm gonna get this side welded so I can use that as a strut to try and push this out a little bit. I don't know if this is a better view. You can see that crack right, right in there. 
where it cracked off. And on the other side. So, I can't get the camera in here and weld at the same time. So, I'll just leave it set up welding. And uh, oh, I put some pieces of uh, OSB in here because I want to try and protect my tires from any hot weld uh, sparks because I certainly don't want to have to replace those. So I'm going to get to it here in just a second. flying on my head. Ah. Okay, repositioning. Uh, trying from a different angle. But I can't see from this angle. sticking my head in front of you guys there but I cannot see that far back okay I went back heated it up a little bit um, and ran over that bead tried to melt it down in there a little bit better looks looks a little cleaner all right so both sides are done uh, what I still have left to do, I'm going to get some black paint and spray paint that crap out of it. Try and keep the rust away from the welding. Uh, i got to pick up some Loctite. And um, these bolts right here, one on each side. I'm going to redo the Loctite on them. Hopefully they don't come out. And hopefully that rib, rib nut that we put in over here on this side, which... I don't know if you could quite see it there between the seam. Hopefully that holds. So, black paint and um, Loctite, and we'll call this done. And ready to move on to the big project. Have you figured out what that's going to be yet? All right. Uh, in case you're interested... This is what it looks like outside. I had to open the garage door because I couldn't see underneath there. So got some some light, and uh, it's 32 degrees out. I don't know if you can hear that wind whipping, but it is screaming out here. Not a pleasant day to be outside. It's a good day to be inside if I had adequate lighting in my garage. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, both parts. And um, stay tuned for the project coming up. It's my wintertime project to keep me occupied on these months of endless months, it seems like, sometimes of snow and crappy weather. It's going to give me some. I hope it's going to So, if you like what you see, Give us a thumbs up, maybe subscribe, it's up to you, and uh, peace out.